Hello, everyone. Now you are going to listen to a word story. J N Lieng Rot. The previous video you learned about the vocabulary and the sentence structure already. So now let's start to listen to our whole story. The story of J N Negrot is very popular in the countryside of Takao Province. When I spent the first twenty years of my life, this main character J is a stupid fellow, and the story is told in order to teach young people not to be like him. This tale then. Is one of the means by which village people, in their easy, informal way, educate their children to practice common sense in everyday life, and this is how it goes. Two young, two young village people called J and Negrot were engaged to be married. One afternoon, as J was looking after cattle in the fields, Negrot. Walked up to him, and they began to chat. Soon, the young man said, "The sun is setting. We must go home before dark." His fiancée looked at him very boldly. "I want to see you again," she said. "Tonight at my place." She was taken aback. Very few girls. Would dare suggest such a meeting because Cambodian society is strict, and young people cannot spend a lot of time together before they get married, and especially not at night. He shuddered. How can I go to your place? Your father sleeps near the door, and if he hears me go up the stairs and into the house, he'll kill me. Ning Ru replied. I'll I'll tie a rope to a basket, and lower it down from the window. If you sit in the basket, I'll pull you up to my room. Tonight, keep touching your ear. When it feels cold, then it will be time for you to come to me. That night, as soon as his ear felt cold, Jay went to his fiancée's house and sat in the basket beneath her window. But Nigrot was not strong enough to pull him more than a few centimeters from the ground. Then the rope broke and the basket thumped down on the hard earth. Jay groaned at the shaking. He got and the dog, woken by the noise, started to bark. The groom's father, fearing that Sips was stealing his cattle, rushed downstairs with an axe. He struck at a human form lying on the ground, and just missed the head. As he bent to try again, he was amazed to recognize his future son-in-law. What are you doing here at this time of night? He gasped. I come see your daughter. The father was both shocked and angry. How dare you? Whose idea was this? Jay hung his head. Your daughter's. Nerud, come here. Called the father. Is it true that this was your idea? Yes, father. The father frowned. What a shameless girl you are! From that moment, Ning Ruot's parents decided to marry the couple immediately before anything could should happen to disgrace their family. The next morning, Ning Ruot's father said to Jay, "I think you and my daughter should marry within a day or two." Please go and buy some ducks for the wedding feast. He gave Jay some money and sent him up to a nearby village, famous for its fat ducks. 
close to the village, Jay saw many dogs swimming on a large pond. He asked a small boy playing nearby, Do those dogs belong to you? The child was amazed that a grown man could think that a mere lad might own the whole flock of dogs. He hesitated, then said, Yes, why? I'm going to be married, my boy, said Jay, and I need dogs for my wedding feast. Will you sell me some? Certainly, replied the child. You can have all of them for 300 drills, but we'll have to catch them yourself. That's a very good bargain, said Jay, and he paid the boy, who ran off as fast as his legs could carry him. The cunning child well knew that the birds on the pond were not fed farm dogs, whose wings were clipped, but lean wild dogs. As Jay went into the water to catch them, they flew off. He watched as they rose higher and higher into the sky. They must be going to heaven, he thought. By now, evening was falling and it began to rain. Jay took shelter under a newly built house on the edge of the village. It belonged to a couple who had just married and were spending their first night together. When I am with you, my dear, said the husband to his young wife, I feel that I am going to heaven. When she heard this, he could not contain himself. If you are going to heaven, he yelled, please catch some ducks for me. Who's that? said the husband. We're supposed to be alone. He grabbed a stick, rushed downstairs and led into, the, uh, led into Jay, who fled for home in the rain and dark without money and without ducks. Nehru's father shook his head sadly when Jay told him what had happened and the next day they went himself to buy food for the wedding feast. A few days after the wedding, Jay's father-in-law told him, We need oxen to plough our fields. Go and buy a pair for me. Here is the money. Then he added, Remember, we are not rich, so please buy a pair of small animals, the smallest possible. Jay took the money and went to a farmer who had oxen for sale. The man showed him the cattle, but Jay hesitated. I wonder if these are what my father-in-law wants. He asked me to buy a pair of very small animals, the smallest possible. The farmer, who was quick-witted and cunning, said, Just a moment. I may have something to suit you. He showed Jay a pair of beetles. You see, he said, these are very small animals indeed. Jay gave a shout of joy. Just to think, that must be exactly what that meant. Thank you so much. And he paid the farmer and ran home. Where are the animals? asked the father-in-law. Watch out, Dad. You stand on them, said foolish Jay. They ju they're just what you wanted, the smallest possible. And he pointed to the beetles. What a stupid, stupid fellow you are, said his mother-in-law sadly. One day a little later, Nehru said to Jay, You'd better go to the lake and bathe before dinner. After you've a good dip, take a mud bath, bath too, just like the water buffaloes do. It's very good for your skin. Yes, there, said Jay obediently, and did exactly as he suggested. But the foolish fellow didn't 
wash up the mat and came home plastered in brown sticky earth which began to harden. I don't feel comfortable. I have to get this off. He said and started to wipe himself with an old pillow. The mat was so dry by now that the pillow was a case of a tore, and he got covered in the feathers that fell off, that fell out of it. If Nirut sees me like this, she'll scold me, he thought. So he went to hide in the loft where the rice was stored. When Nirut came in, she noticed a strange feature in the loft. She was frightened and ran to her father. He looked at a feathery fissure, half hidden in the shadows, and said, It must be the rice green god. Quickly, burn some incense and call your mother to come so that we can all kneel and become the rice green god to our home. We are honored to have you here, god from the east. He began respectfully. Which direction is east that? Came a familiar voice from the loft. Oh, not you again, you stupid fellow, said the father in exasperation. His wife and daughter laughed at the queer brown and white fisher and ordered Jay back to the lake to wash up the mat and feathers. In time, the couple had child. One day, Nirut asked Jay, Will you look after the baby for me while I go to the fields to work? Suddenly, said her husband, Soon after Nirut left the house, the baby began to cry. Jay rocked it in its tiny hammock, made out of towel and tied at both ends with string and fastened between two posts. But the child cried and cried on. I must see if there is anything wrong with it, he thought. He examined the child suddenly from the toes up. When he reached the top of its head, he noticed the place between where the two parts of the skull bone had not yet joined together. Look at that beating pulse. It must be a boil. No wonder the boy is crying. I'd better get a knife and cut into the baby's head. Blood poured out, and as its life ebbed away, the baby gradually stopped crying. When Nirut came home, Jay announced proudly, She don't know how to look after our child. No wonder it cried. Didn't you know it had a boy that needed glancing? Now I have attended to the boy, the baby doesn't cry anymore. Nirut rushed to where the baby lay in the blood-choked hammock. You've killed our child. She gasped. Horrified, stupid Jay didn't know what to say. When the first feeling of shock had left her, Nirut said to Jay, You had better take our child's body and bury it. Jay wrapped the tiny farm in a mat, then carrying it under one arm and with tools under the other. He went off to dig a little grave. He was so upset and in such a daze that he didn't notice when the dead ba- body slipped from the mat under his arm and fell onto the, la- the road. He dug the grave, placed the mat in it, covered it with earth and walked back home. On the way, he came across the tiny body by the roadside. He took one look at it, then rushed to his wife. Nirut said, Nirut, he said, Other babies have died too. I have just buried our child 
but there's another one lying dead beside the road. Perhaps there's a sickness going around. Nerud went to see what had happened, and as soon as she drew near to the child on the road, she burst into tears. You dropped our child and buried only the mat. How could you? She cried. This time, she carried the baby's body to the grave and stayed with her, with her foolish husband, to make sure that their child was properly buried. Nero left home very early in the morning to visit a friend in a nearby village. Before she went out, she sh- she said to her husband. When the sun comes up, put some rice out to dry. Not much, just enough for us tonight. Put it on some clothes, or a mat, and an old sink will do. Even a skin. Leave it in the heat all day. I cook it when I come home. Jay could not find a p- a piece of clothes or meat or mat. She said something about skin. He thought, perhaps my skin will do. So, he picked up two fistfuls of rice and stood outside all day. His hands full of rice, outstretched to the sun. When Nerud came home, she found the rice fine and dry, and her husband so sunburned that she could hardly recognize him. What a foolish man! She sighed. That's not fair. Objected Jay. I do everything you ask, but you never praise me. That's because you can't do anything right," replied Nirut. And to think I will spend the rest of my life with you. And so she did. For Jay and Nirut lived together until a ripe old age. I've heard that story so often, I can't remember where I heard it first. Everyone in my province know it. It's told by grandparents, parents at social gatherings, on a radio. Boys learn to have common sense by laughing at foolish Jay, and thinking. For themselves, I'd never do such silly things. I'd know the difference between wild dogs and farm dogs. I wouldn't kill my own child. <coughs> Parents refer to this story again and again. If a boy does something foolish, they'll test him by calling him Jay. If a girl is cheeky, they'll say, "Your name should be Nero." I am the only person in my family to receive a formal education beyond primary school. I know that a university gives you a lot of information, but it doesn't necessarily make you any wiser than the village people you grow grew up with. I have a strong admiration for the se- for the simple and pleasant way in which village people educate their children in everyday life by using stories like Jay and Nirod. Okay, so that is all about our story, everyone. Thank you for your attention, and if you like my video, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you.